This is a Leica RM2255 paraffin microtome. However, it will section resin embedded tissue as well. The first thing that I'm going to draw your attention to is the lock on the hand wheel at the apex here. When that is locked, this head becomes immobile. It's most important that you lock that hand wheel. If you don't, there's a counterweight in that hand wheel. If you don't lock it, it can take your fingers onto the blade if you're doing something with a chuck. So always lock at the apex and always use the blade guard. There is another lock as well, which is down here. Don't rely upon that lock. This is a bit like a handbrake on a car. You, you think it's on, but it's not. So you have to pull it firmly on for it to be in lock position. Don't use it. Rely upon that. Okay. Next up, there's a removable waste tray held on by two strong magnets. And then here's a clamp which releases the blade base and you can move the base backwards and forwards there's a scale bar on the bottom here and about two and a half centimeters is about right for most paraffin blocks so i'll just lock that up shouldn't have to touch it again from now on it's another lever here if you release that it allows you to traverse left and right with the blade there is no blade in this at the moment so you can use different regions of the blade when they blunt so i'll start off on the right hand side i'll lock that up the next one is this lever here and that will lock the blade in the vise. I'll cover that later on. The tilt is adjustable via an Allen key down this hole here. However, it's preset for the S35 blades. Okay, so that's the base covered. Cover the chuck, release this lever here that allows you to uh, these to be adjustable so you can choose to change the X and Y perspective of the chuck. There is a zero point, so if you have a look on this button here, this indicator button. When that comes back to zero, the bottom button will pop out. And there's a, an indicator there as well. I can't actually see it from here. Has that popped? Yeah. yeah. So that's back to zero. You only really need to adjust that if you're doing stereotactic work. If not, just leave it at zero. We have course advance. This grey button here with two arrows. If you press and hold that, then the head moves. It's barely noticeable. We are talking in microns. Then we've got fine advance or fine retraction. There is also coarse retraction. Now these three buttons you have to press and hold for them to move. This one, you can just press it once and it will go all the way home. I'll stop that from going all the way home. We don't want to work it with it fully retracted. There's also something else I want to show you. There's a red and green scale bar down here. 
when it's overextended, if you go in with a camera, then it goes more red than green. You don't want to work with it really overextended. The further back you have it, the better. We have a trim sectioning button and you can toggle between trimming and sectioning. And whatever is displayed on the handset is also displayed upon the um, paraffin microtome as well. So if you want to, you can change the thickness that you're sectioning at. And there is a bit of a catch here. If you watch, it's 0, 0.4.0. And then as we drop down, you'd think that it'd go 0, 0, 0.5, but it actually moves the decimal place over. So at first glance, you think you're cutting at five microns, but you're actually trying to section at a half micron and you, that won't be possible in paraffin. Will be possible in resin embedded tissue. So we'll reset that back to five. We've got a trimming setting of about 30 microns, which is fine for trimming most paraffin blocks at ambient. Yep. I'll cover the actual motor drive last of all. If we come over here to the microtome now, so it's displaying trimming, sectioning, motor stop, take it off lock, and then there's also a counter and you can clear both individually. So one will be the number of turns of the hand wheel and the other is the depth in microns that you've gone into your paraffin block. So if your PI wants you to section every 65th micron, you don't have to think about it, it can do it for you. You can then re-zero that and carry on. And do the next section at 65 microns if you wish. Um, okay, right. What I'm going to draw your attention to now is on the cutting downward stroke, there's no nothing lit here so on the downward stroke it goes past the blade when it reaches the bottom of its travel the retraction lights up what's happened here is this head has been automatically retracted so that on the return stroke it misses the back of the blade to cancel the retraction you've got to go over the apex that's why I suggest each time you do a full rotation, right? So knock that retraction off. If you stop it part way up and then adjust it because it's missing the blade, it'll add that retraction back on and you'll cut a very thick slice. So always complete the rotation. And I'd recommend that you get in the habit of turning the hand wheel away from you. Older microtomes, they only work in one direction. These modern ones will work in both directions, but if you end up on an old microtome somewhere, then it'll come naturally to you and you won't sit there wondering why it's not cutting. That's probably because you're going backwards with the hand wheel. So just out of kind of best practice, go away from you. So I'm gonna show you how to put a paraffin block in this particular chuck. So this was the original chuck that was launched when they, um, when they started with this model. It proved to be unpopular. I quite like it. I think it's easier to use than the old one. But because it was unpopular, Leica reverted to the older design, which we've got on our other 
paraffin microtome in the core facility. So we'll show that on another video. Now then, so you can put this in four ways and this chuck just activates with a lever on the top, locked. You can choose to put it in left to right, right to left relative to your slanted cassette label end or horizontally or vertically, top to bottom, bottom to top. I prefer a horizontal. The reason being, if you've got a rectangular block, you use more blade and it goes through less paraffin. When it's vertical, you use less blade and it goes through a deeper block of paraffin and you will get more compression of your section in this format than you will in that format. Okay, so I'm going to stick to that, standardise it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it as long as you standardise it. If I, so I've got the label on the right hand side here. If I was to put it in that way around, then the block, if I'd, after I trimmed it in, wouldn't match the angle relative to the blade. So just standardise what you're doing. And to do that, as a little indicator, I cut a notch on the corner, just as a reminder of which way I put it in. Now the other thing is, it's this cup of tea handhold. So it's finger and thumb, about two thirds of the way either side of the cassette. This finger's above the block, therefore it's above the blade. These two fingers are flared out as if you're holding a cup of tea. Therefore they're nowhere near the blade. If you bring them underneath, you take your fingers towards the blade. So just best habit is just like that. And that's it. Okay. The other thing I'm going to say about these blocks, the clamp should go onto plastic if you've got an excess of wax on the cassette around the outside. It'll change how it holds it as it compresses the wax. Also, if you've got a, a, an excess of wax on the back, it'll project it from the clamp and it won't clamp properly. So this is quite nice and flat. It's been heat ironed down. So that's, that's fine, that is, that's superb. So this is the original style tissue tech type of chuck that has been around since the late 1960s, early 1970s. And this one is slightly different. You action it using uh, a thumb on the very top corner and a knuckle to brace that. There is no lever clamp, it's towards you. And again, you can put the cup of tea handhold and put it in like that. If your block is clean, it will practically just want to fall out. It's easy. Here we go with the S35 type blade. Jet one blade. I'll press down the diagonally opposite corner and that lifts that jaw apart slightly. Put the blade in, cover it, clamp it. There is also a video of me doing this uh, for compliance and risk under sharps put that extra little blade guard on because it covers a unused bit of blade and now we'll trim this in when this is up in the air you don't know the distance from the block to the blade 
when you lower it down so that the bottom of the paraffin block is just above the blade then you can gauge the distance between the two so I'll advance it so I think I'm there a bit too far retracts it a bit okay So at the, at the moment I can press this a bit and advance it and the amount we're going in is relative to how long I keep that button pressed. However I can take that randomness out of it by just setting it on trimming and now each turn of that is 30 microns. And then as you think you've hit your tissue, revert back to five micron and give it a nice smooth polish. When you're trimming in, you will end up with a rough surface here. By polishing it about 10 turns, nice and smooth, you'll get rid of any irregularities on the cut surface. Lock it. Cover it, take it out, and now I'm having a look at what's actually exposed within the block. So if you catch the light coming off the surface of the block, you can see which is trimmed in and which isn't. At the moment, this piece of brain is trimmed in, and we've just started to hit the other bit of brain here. Okay, normally I would chill blocks this way up because it's a training one I'm going to put it face down and chill it as rapidly I can I've added water to this ice because it'll chill it quicker when it's a uh, slushy than just the ice crystals with some tissues brains lymph nodes don't leave your uh, block swimming in icy water for too long or it can swell out of the paraffin block if you're not careful. Depends how well they've been processed. Some tissues, if you're cutting eyes, like to be soaked in there for all day practically before they will cut well, particularly the lens. Okay. But we'll be all right. That'll cool down and we'll use that as a, an example for microtomy in a bit. So nice and smooth, nice and steady, don't stop, you'll get a nice ribbon. Pull it gently out to take any wrinkles out of it. There we go. So I have enough there for a ribbon. Put a little bit of warm water. Pick the ribbon up with a paintbrush. Put it onto cold water. That'll help take any wrinkles out of it. Where the notch has been cut indicates where one section finishes and one starts. You can split them with a pair of forceps. Pick them up with a cheap and cheerful non-sticky slide. Put them into the water bath, let them flatten and then pick them up with one of the charged slides. There's a section. Let that drain vertically. Mm. Come to 
the side of it across and then lift it vertically. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So you've got two on there now. What I'm going to do here is demonstrate how to set a motor drive up on it. So I'm going to select continuous. Speeds at zero. What I'm going to do is define a cutting window. So what I'm going to do is approach the blade with a block, press that button once, it flashes, go through the block, press it again. That's define the cutting window where the, where the tissue is. Turn the speed up a little bit, it's on continuous and both buttons pressed at the same time and away it goes. Now you can change the speed during that cutting window. This is particularly good for hard specimens that need slowly cutting where you don't want to be sat there and turning that hand wheel at a very slow rate. I'll just stop it. So we've got continuous, we've also got single. So I'll just put it into single and literally that will cut one slide. Okay. I wouldn't bother with step or rock. The block has been removed and I'm going to remove the blade. And you can reuse the blade and store it in a 15 mil tube and reuse that for trimming in tissue. So there's no blade there, there's no block. I'm going to show you the kind of scary bit when it's too fast. Take it off lock. Put it onto continuous. That's going way too wrong, way too fast. I'm out of control, I don't know how to stop it. There's an emergency stop button. The emergency stop is lit. And you can cancel that to return it back to normal. Therefore, store this speed down at zero. End of the session. Brush the bulk of your rubbish into the waste tray. Strong magnet. There we go. It's locked. No blade in it. Blade guards up. Turn it off. The end of your session, COVID, spray down your touch surfaces. Dry it off. <laughs>